Welcome to Electron Online, and here our third video on the Stefan Boltzmann's law will enable us to fully understand the complexity in trying to figure out the distance to the stars beyond what we can measure with the angle of parallax. We already discovered that with Wien's law we can figure out the temperature of a star simply by looking at its color and the, the predominant wavelength we get from the star. With the Stefan Boltzmann's law, we also realized then that the amount of radiation or the luminosity of a star is proportional to the size of the star and the temperature to the four power. And in the last video, we saw how we can then make out if we know the temperature difference by looking at the color, we will know the size relationship between two stars. We can do that by measuring their luminosities by how bright they appear, but there's one more problem because we also realize that the luminosity is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. Now, in this case, the R stands for distance away. So we, we like to use the radius, uh, R for radius, but R also stands for distance, how far away something is. So maybe, so that we don't confuse one another, let's turn this into a D. That may make it a lot simpler for people to look at, so we don't confuse the distance to the star with the radius of the star. All right, so now let's imagine for a moment uh, that we're looking at three identical stars. Identical in terms of temperature and size. Let's say three white stars, they're all three at 10,000 degrees Kelvin, and we measure the luminosity. In one star, we measure the luminosity to be four times as much as the second star, and the third star, only one quarter the luminosity of the second star. Now, you realize that they're all the same temperature, and they, let's assume that they're all the same size. Why would one star appear brighter than the other? Well, the answer is simple, because it's closer. So there's this relationship between the brightness, how bright a star appears to us, and how far the star is away from us. So by knowing that, can we know how far one star is relative to the other? Well, let's figure that out. So here, if that is true, we can then say that the distance is proportional to 1 over the luminosity, or and then we take the square root of that, so it would have to be the square root of that. So if we rearrange that proportionality equation, and we put distance up there and luminosity down there, we take the square root, we can then say that the distance is proportional to 1 over the luminosity, uh, the, 1 over the square root of the luminosity. So let's figure out where this star is relative to this star. Well, let's see here. So, how do we work that out? Let's say, since this star is brighter, it will be closer. The question is, how much closer? Well, it depends on the relative luminosity. So, what we're going to do here is that the distance here is proportional to 1 over the difference in the, loss, square, the square root of the dis, difference in the luminosity, which means that the distance, therefore, is proportional to 1 over 2. All right. So that means if the difference in luminosity is four times, that means the difference in distance is twice. That means this will be half the distance of this star, or this star will be twice as far away than this star. And the same token, if this is one quarter the luminosity, that means that this star must be twice as far as this star, and that star must be four times as far as this star. So that's by knowing the relationship between the luminosity or intensity or brightness of an object and the distance, we could then say if they are, are all the same size and they're all the same temperature and the luminosity is different from this proportionality, we should be able to figure out how far they are relative to one another. The problem is we still don't know how far they actually are. So here we have three things. We have the temperature of a star, which is easily identified by using Wien's law, not a problem. The size of the star is a little bit more difficult. We can find their relative size, but not their actual size, because we don't know the distance to the stars. And we can find their relative distance, but not their actual distance, because we don't know their actual size. So here we are, three things. Temperature, because they're color, the distance to the stars, and the size of the stars. And two of those three things, we can find the relative size and the relative distance, but not their actual size and their actual distance. To find their actual distance and their actual size, we need to find uh, the true measure of one of those two quantities. If we find the actual distance to the stars, we can find their actual size. If we can find their actual size, we can find their actual distance. But we have to have one of those two unknown quantities. And as long as we don't have one of those two unknown quantities, we can really find the true distance to the stars. 
And that was the big challenge at the time. When we go back about 130, 140 years, people were really scratching their heads saying, how do we figure that out? And in the next video, I'll show you the key. There were two very smart astronomers. One of them, his name was Hertzsprung, and the other one, his name was Russell. And independently, they thought of the solution to this big problem right here. So if you're interested, come to the next video and take a look how they did it.